the current theory of black holes generates infinities in the singularity which are logically inconsistent with observation. The theory is therefore admitted to be inadequate. Since we can't see into a black hole or do experiments, the matter remains on the hook, and new theories are expected to resolve the inherent problems. Of particular interest to me are the jets of matter being expelled into space normal to the centers of rotating galaxies. These jets may be hundreds of thousands of light years long, and often, though not always, come in opposed pairs. The source is thought to be an immense black hole which exists at the center of most galaxies. In the present theory, the method of ejection is thought to be an electromagnetic redirection of infalling matter from the accretion disk, which is sent to the poles before crossing the event horizon. The theory is constructed on the premise that it is absolutely impossible for matter to exit the black hole after crossing the event horizon, which is the imaginary sphere around a black hole where the escape velocity reaches light speed. I find this explanation to be objectionable on the grounds that it appears at odds with the general character of existence as I have come to understand it. Thus I am compelled to formulate an alternative more consistent with my own expectations. My position is therefore to explore the only other obvious ploy, which is that the jets are formed by matter ejected from within the black hole by a mechanism to be explained here. The singularity that necessarily forms at the center of a black hole must be prevented from forming by means of the nuclear force, which is known to be repulsive at less than half a Fermi. By the standard model, this would not override the gravitational force, which is supposed, by the same standard model, to go without disruption to infinity as the singularity is approached. However, I postulate that the gravitational field diminishes at greater than 1 over r as the radius approaches the Compton wavelength of a baryon. That is, as the nuclear force makes its appearance, the gravitational force disappears in tandem, so that the nuclear repulsion at one-half Fermi dominates the structure of a black hole at the approach to singularity. Thus, the smallest possible size of a black hole center, where all the mass is, is stopped, absolutely, at around a Fermi, and is possibly much larger than that by other mechanisms. If you are interested in the relationship of the gravitational force to the nuclear force, you may see my video, Quantum Gravity and the Nuclear Force. It concerns the hypothesis that the gravitational force is about vectors normal to a line connecting two bodies, and the nuclear force is about vectors parallel to that line. Having dispensed with the singularity, let us move on to those pesky jets. We're going to open a door through the event horizon with angular momentum conservation. Thus, the infalling matter in the accretion disk has an angular velocity relative to the black hole at the center of a galaxy which is why it forms a disk in the first place. We have to project the standard model as best we can beyond the event horizon with the aforementioned singularity preventer added to reduce the gravitational component to manageability. The speed of the Earth in orbit around the Sun is about 30 kilometers per second, which is about one ten thousandth of light velocity. Suppose that the sun has lassoed the earth with an imaginary rope and is pulling us toward it with a rope. When the earth is half the distance to the sun from its present position, its velocity will double to 60 kilometers per second by angular momentum conservation. Half again and we're up to 120 kilometers per second 
at a distance of one-fourth of the Earth's 150 million kilometer radius, or about 38 million kilometers. Thus, the orbital velocity would increase inversely to the fraction of its original radius in accordance with the principle of angular momentum conservation. At what point would it exceed light velocity? The answer is at 1 over 2 to the 14th power, or about 1 16,000th of its present radius, which comes to about 9,000 kilometers. And, yes, that's inside the sun, but just squeeze the sun smaller in your imagination. You see, then, that as matter is pulled into the black hole, it would necessarily achieve light velocity before it gets to a typical event horizon, which is why a black hole has trouble getting bigger. Practically everything that it pulls on just swings around it in a hyperbolic trajectory or elliptical orbit. Or, as someone on the internet once so aptly remarked, a black hole doesn't suck any more than any other star. Nevertheless, these things exist, and we have to deal with the physics of infalling matter that, by the standard model, must exceed the velocity of light after going through the event horizon. Or, the infalling matter does not exceed light velocity, but merely grows more massive, as per special relativity. But this takes us to another problem. If angular momentum is conserved by adding mass instead of velocity to infalling matter, where is that near-infinite mass? Black holes may dominate a galaxy, but their masses are quite a bit short of infinite. An infinite mass would be required way before reaching any singularity or anywhere near to it. Clearly something's got to go. Something is wrong with the standard model. Take your pick. I've given arguments in other videos that all of these principles must be modified to some extent, even in a world that is accessible to earthbound experiment. So expect some modification in a black hole with total confidence. What I expect within an event horizon is a disk of matter whose stability is achieved by whatever modifications of physical theory take place way down in there. The gravitational field of a disk is different than the field of a sphere. It is an approximation to a toroidal shape, very feeble in the center and strong at the edges. But when observed from afar, it approaches the shape of a sphere in terms of isogravimetric surfaces. Our explanation of jets of matter ejected from a black hole is that as matter accumulates within the event horizon, an oblate spheroidal object forms, and when the eccentricity of the spheroid is sufficient, the event horizon in the center of the torus dips into the object itself, allowing the ejection of matter, which is under enormous pressure. This gets us around the twin jet observations but not the single jets. These must have an additional element that I've conjectured as the cause of a UFO's gravitational field component. That is, there must be a current of electricity within the black hole, or more likely, a charge on the black hole itself, which generates a moving gravitational field that goes like the clothes in your washing machine, up or down at the post, and the opposite at the side wall of the tub. This gives matter a reason to go off in one direction only. 